Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So, yeah, Series 11 finished recently-ish, and I, so I thought, why not just rank all the series of Doctor Who? And just to be upfront, I do actually quite like all these series, which I think is rare for a show. But yeah, I think all of these series are good, just at different levels. So, at number 11, we have Series 8. Now, there are some episodes here that I really, really do like. Robot Sherwood's great, Into the Daleks, great. I quite like the Cybermen finale. However, there's just a lot of generic, just rubbish. The pilot's pretty bad. And generally, I think the Clara Doctor dynamic doesn't work that well in this. I don't really like Peter Capaldi's first series performance. I feel like he's struggling to find the character, which he finds in later series. And it's the later series in which I really do love this character. Also, the series arc, it's just not great. And the ideas that it leads up to really quite badly executed ideas to be honest so and number 10 is series 7 so this season is obviously split into two parts now with the amy half apart from a town called mercy which is just uh that half is actually quite a good half season however the season with matt smith and clara oh it drags there's so many just mediocre episodes a lot of that second half of that series is just really, really forgettable and dull and boring. But the only reason Series 7 is higher than Series 8 is because of four episodes of the Amy half, which I think are really some great, great episodes. So number nine is Series 10. I think the Doctor-Companion relationship is really, really great in this. Peter Capaldi's really found his groove as the Doctor by this stage. However, the character of Missy really does get ruined in Series 10. Gosh, gets driven into the ground. And the Monk's three-parter, is put right in the middle of the series and it really just stalls the flow because none of those episodes especially the first and the last one are very impressive at all in fact they're quite bad and yeah that really just stalls the flow of the series which is why series 10 ends up at number nine so at slot eight is series six now this surprised me how i actually got up and on rewatch i found that i really do like the river song arc I feel like it really comes to a nice conclusion and there are lots of really nice River Song elements to this series. There are just some generally great episodes. However, the split to me between of Series 6 really irritated me on original broadcast. It just really stalls the flow. I just want to see 10 to 13 episodes of a series and just having half of that just doesn't work for me. And the Flesh 2 part of is genuinely some of the worst Who I've ever seen ever. Honestly, that Flesh 2 part of is god awful. It's just so boring. So yeah, that's why Series 6 ends up at number 8. So at number 7, we have Series 9. Now this really does improve on the Doctor Companion relationship. I feel like Peter Capaldi and Clara really do get a lot better in this series, which I really do like. I feel like this is a similar story where there are some really good highs episodes wise. I really like the Zygon two-parter, all the stuff with the shield is really good. And of course there are some lows. I don't think the Dalek two-parter is particularly great. And of course Hellbent sucks. But you know, the highs here I think are slightly higher. I personally believe the Zygon two-parter is one of the best modern Who things we've, we've been given. I love that Zygon two-parter. However, I do have to reiterate. Hellbent is absolute trash. So number six is series three. I'm a big fan of David Tennant and Russell T. Davis. However, this is the weakest RTD companion. There are some mediocre episodes, which is unfortunate. I feel like the first half is littered with some good and then some mediocre episodes. And then the second half of this series has a lot more really great episodes. That's where we get the Family of Blood two-parter, the three-parter with Captain Jack back. So, you know, that kind of puts this series up. So number five is the newest series, series 11. This series we've got some really fantastic companions and I feel like the episodes really talk about some issues that just genuinely need to be talked about. I think Rosa was great, Kablam was great, and I really did like the finale. I thought that was a great way to wrap up the character arcs. However, there were some episodes like Arachnids in the UK and the weird one on a space hospital that were just dull, boring, and a bit soulless. And it worries me that a lot of the episodes that weren't written by Chris Chibnall were the ones I actually quite liked. So yeah, that's a bit of a worry for the future if the showrunner is a writer that I don't particularly enjoy. 
But you know, that's that's all right. So at number four, we have series one. So this was just a genuinely brilliant reboot slash sequel. It really just switches up the classic formula and just translates it to a modern audience really, really well. It introduces brilliant new characters like the Ninth Doctor and Rose. There's a couple of mediocre episodes, The Unquiet Dead, Long Game. While I like some elements of the Slitheen episode, I don't think all of the elements of the Slitheen are brilliant. The farting could be got rid of very quickly. But yeah, I think RTD starts off great with this, and that's why it's at number four. Really like this series. Now, in my top three, these are just genuinely fantastic seasons of any show, and I love these. So at number three, we have series five. So I think this does a good job of letting you forget about Tenant. Tenant left on such a high after series four, and whilst it might not beat some of the brilliantness of Tenant, I feel like Matt Smith takes the role, makes it his own, and lets you forget about maybe your sadness of that, of that actor leaving, and takes you into the new era quite well. There are some fantastic Doctor moments. I feel like series five has some absolutely brilliant speeches. I think that's one of the best things that Moffat brought to Doctor Who, and that was some brilliant, brilliant speeches. I think the Weeping Angel two-parter, I think the Pandorica, and the just, just generally different moments, like him meeting a Dalek for the first time, the 11th Doctor meeting a Dalek. Just that anger and that rage still there. I think those are just some brilliant 11th Doctor moments. However, there are small little problems. At this stage, the problems are really, really small, but Rory dies so much, like, throughout Rory's tenure on the show, but especially during this season, it feels like Rory dies every other minute. Then the crack in the wall isn't a great thing. I've never particularly enjoyed the crack in the wall, but yeah, those just little problems to a fantastic series. Now, number two is series two. So the average quality of these episodes would get it to eighth or even ninth place. For me, this is a big nostalgia pick. This is really a crowd pleaser series. There was a introduction of the Cybermen, they even gave us Daleks versus Cybermen, that was a base under siege story, that was a horror story, and they brought back a classic companion in Sarah Jane Smith. It's just re these elements just really, really work for me. And as a nostalgic fan of Doctor Who, I really love these elements that link back to the classic series and yet make moments their own. And also, yes, there are some really bad episodes, but most of them are still fun. They're still enjoyable. I mean, we literally get an episode and about 50% of it is an ELO tribute, and, you know, I can totally respect that. Love a good bit of ELO. However, I do have to say one thing. Fear Her is awful. Oh my god. Ugh. But I love Series 2, mainly because of nostalgia, but this is my list. Don't judge me. And at number one, we have Series 4. Now, David Tennant and Catherine Tate, to me, made the perfect artist team. I would have loved to see another series, and the only time I have ever got excited, like majorly excited for Big Finish stories, was when David Tennant and Catherine Tate were doing a Big Finish, three Big Finish stories. It was just so brilliant to see them play off each other so well. It had the humour, yet it had really big emotional moments. It has time travel episodes, it, has, it brings back New Who and classic monsters, and it has some really, really scary scary episodes like this season a lot of it was really high behind the sofa with the library stuff and then midnight midnight is such a beautiful beautiful brilliant episode even unicorn the wasp which isn't a brilliant episode is still enjoyable just the level of quality on, on these episodes are just the best out of any season and we get a brilliant brilliant doctor companion dynamic series four has to be at the number one slot so, what did you think of my list? Please feel free to comment your own down below. Please like, please subscribe, how to chat with anyone in the comments, and thank you for watching.